I'm Thiago from Brazil. We I studied in the Institute of Technology, ETA, and I'm going to talk about our robotic teams, uh, ETA Drives. Uh, I, okay. Well, we have our humanoid robots design in our team. Here's some pictures of him. And next. Year. Well, now about our agenda. At first, we'll get started with an overview. Then we're going to talk about our shop model, the mechanical and the electronic parts. Then we're going to CNN to the text lines and fog boundary, motion control, localization, and we're going to finish with fruit parsley sensing. Well, this is our current, current team. He is made by four robots of our model G1, the Shapi. Well, about the mechanics. Our current model is based in the diving of two robots because we have we needed something to get started, something to base our design and do the, the developed part of the robot. And right now we use the servos of the robots MX28 for the Sharp G1 design, our current team that we use in our competitions. Well, then we have our foot and leg design. Both of them were made with the SolidWorks software, and we conducted some uh, structural analysis and optimizations, both of mass and uh, structure in this the meaning of resistance and strength of the parts. So we could have a model that is light and strong at the same time and optimize our, our robots. Well, we, are, we also have our torso design and arm design. About our torso, uh, we ultimate, we opted to make something that is very compact, but we found later that it's difficult or maintains process. Well, in the other, in the, our other model that we developed later, the G2, we learned it with the mistakes of this model and optimized this. And later we have our arm design. We also found a, a little problem in this model that the RB was a little short and it's a result in the robots uh, doing a movement of getting up very difficult. And to solve that, we made a glove for all, so they become a gentleman. And it helped with this part of the movement. And Hi, everyone can listen? Yes. Yes, okay. Uh, hi, my name is Gustavo, and now I'm gonna briefly present the electronics of our humanoid robot. This is Cam, it's an overview of the electronics of the robot, showing some key parts and how they connect. In, in green, you have the parts designed by the team, and in yellow, com commercial parts that we bought. The most part of the data process is made by a high performance processing unit, the HPPU which is an uh, Intel node located in the robot torso. Uh, using this data, the, this main computer cal uh, calculates the reposition of the cells and sends information to the control monitoring board, the CMB in green. And the CMB, it's a board that they use with low level hardware. Uh, it's responsible for self-communication, IMU data acquisition interpretation, and servo power distribution. The servos painted the Dynamic so MX28, are connected to the same bit through a daisy chain network, which reduces the number of fires and then increases robustness. We also have we also have a PWB power board that's connected to a external power source and generates a 3.3 and 5 volts power process. A real interface board read that's basically an interface board with buttons to facilitate command input. And also we are developing a food sensor board, the FSB. Uh, which is a board located in the robot's foot, equipped with string gates and the uh, national unit with the purpose of communicate foot data to the main computer. The idea is use this board to the current version of the robot and the next one. 
that we got out later. And next slide. And, and this is just a 3D overview from out in front the CMB and the PWB, just for a notion of how they how they look. You can even see the the path, the connection between them. We have the two CMB in the PWB, and we have this red pin in the CMB boards. Uh, and where you put the wires. And next, next slide, we have the other two boards, the rib the three buttons and the FSB, which is the last the last board that we are developing. And this process. Uh, go ahead. Uh, uh, the software is done on a layer system, a layered based architecture. Uh, first, we have the communication that handles uh, the communication. After that, it goes to perception, which um, contains like computer vision and other sensors, such as the IMU uh, that was more uh, shown in the, in the electronics part. After that, uh, using the percepted uh, environment, uh, the robot creates a model and where uh, it thinks the, the goalposts are where the lines are and, and that kind of stuff. And using that, it can localize itself. Uh, and based on that, it does uh, also the position of the wall is very important and the, the goal. And based on that, it can uh, decide which uh, behavior to take. Currently, we are using a finite state machine. However, uh, a behavior tree implementation uh, is well underway. We're just... Uh, on the uh, implementing some nodes and testing it out. After that, there's the control uh, that takes uh, part of the walking and that kind of stuff. And then the action of actually does it. Uh, next slide, please. Then uh, we have uh, our main tools that we use. Our code is done in C++. We also use ROS uh, to ease the implementation and to fasten it because uh, to make it faster use OpenCV which is a very useful library for machine learning purposes we use TensorFlow and with the simulator we usually use Gazebo to test some things like uh, simple walking uh, vision uh, localization however we bo we bots is very useful because it has uh, all the rules implemented. So if we want to try some higher level behaviors, such as the civil Jamaican, uh, WeBots is very invaluable. And for uh, algebra, uh, linear algebra calculations, we use IGEN. Uh, here are some awards uh, of the past. In the LARC, which is the Latin American uh, robot competition, in 2018, we got first place. In the RoboCup of 2019, we got top eight. In the LAC of 2019, we got first place. And it Android also has many other, uh, takes part in many other competitions, not only the humanoid kid size, but such as the 3D, 2D, uh, the SSL, VSS. So in total, uh, at uh, 2019, we got seven awards at all those things. In the Brazil Open 2020, we also got first place. Uh, and on the LAC 2020, we got first place on the kids size, which was a, a vision competition to detect robots. And also on the racing, we got uh, first place with the Darwin. And also on the virtual league, we were very lucky to get first place as well. Well, now about our shop model G2. We pass through uh, mainly three tapes during the, this process. And to talk about some of them, uh, there are the, the, this series of tapes that I commented before, they are three, uh, directly correlated. Uh, correlated. At first, we have the design that we structure with the semantic analysis and dynamics 
uh, the desire of motion, uh, the geometry and material, the structural simulation with the solid works and dances. So we get to optimization of our design and extruder of our robots. But this design is directly correlated with the main things because we have the challenge of do something that was light and functional and easy to assemble, disassemble, and use our tools to do the maintenance. And we have extruded practical solutions to some problems that we have learned with our previous mistakes in the uh, previous models. And by the end, we have the manufacturing part. So we use a very range of things. Uh, 2D printing with some covers, polymers, and resin to do some pieces some pieces that absorb shocks. Uh, we also do posters. We also work with sponsors. And to get something more visual, visual about the thing, uh, we have some pictures here. Uh, something about the polymer, polymers and 3D printing. We use both of these to make the covers of the robots to absorb some shock. Here we have a cut of our assembly complete and a picture of um, the structural analysis made with the solid works. And here's a timeline. Our robot started like this and he was getting better with the time. And our current model is from 2019 uh, because the the pandemic is we, well, we uh, this and the uh, uh, perjudicating a lot of our mechanical team, and we couldn't work on our next model in the way that we wanted. Oh, well, this is our new design. Uh, right now, he is just uh, needing some a little bit of pieces to get uh, the process of manufacturing and they are saying we expected to finish this little boy this year and talk about uh, problems that did before the arms of our G1 model were short so in this model we made that the the arm is very long so he could do the movement of get up with more um, easily Uh, now talking about a little bit more of the vision. Uh, we have the challenge to identify the features on the soccer on the soccer field, and the soccer field itself. Uh, we do uh, this in two approaches: uh, a more modern and state-of-the-art technique, which uses uh, convolutional neural networks (CNNs) to detect the goals, posts, and balls. Uh, we also had uh, some research on detecting robots, uh, like uh, at Lark in 2020. And right now we are, we have working on a, a, a neural network that can also detect uh, intersections, like T intersections and, and L intersections. But we also have a classic approach that is uh, based on segmentation, and we use it to detect the field. Uh, by uh, a convex hole on the green blobs and uh, the lines through Huff's transform. Uh, however, we are studying uh, a way to use the state of the art, which are neural networks, also for the segmentation. Uh, currently, we use uh, color segmentation, which is done like a, a lookup table. But uh, we also uh, done research on using CNNs to, such as SegEdge, to infer the, uh, the segmentation by context. Uh, I, next slide, you can see a demonstration. Uh, oh, it's after that. That's uh, how it's done, right? It's a, a neural network, a CNN, that uses a segmented segmentation, uh, which is based on context rather than just the, the value of each pixel. And it's based on SegNet. Uh, next uh, slide, there is a, a, semin, uh, a demonstration, like right, preliminary results. And as you can see, it clearly uh, uh, segments the field 
the lines and the other parts of the image. So it's very promising. And with this, we hope that uh, our vision could be more robust to different light changes, such as when in the virtual league, when you have like uh, different light changes in environments, I, I think that the, using the segnet would be very good for this case. Okay, now we're going to continue the presentation. I'm Marcos Massimo. I am a professor here at the Computer Science Division at the Iowa Institute of Technology, and I am the advisor of eight Androids. Uh, so I'm going to talk about motion control and localization. Uh, first, about motion control, uh, we use classic uh, dynamic models for our motion control. We are we, our walking is based on the ZMP concept, the zero moment point concept, and the linear inverted, inverted pendulum model. So the ZMP concept, I think that most people in the human not really know about this concept. Uh, basically, you have the foot of the robot here, and you have forces and moments acting on this foot. And the zero moment point is the point where the ground reaction force must act to stabilize the robot. So you can derive this using equations and about the, and knowing where the zero moment point is going to be, you can plan your dynamics of the robot, you can plan your motion to have a stable walking. And the linear vector dependent model, we all know that a human robot is a very complex dynamical system. So you have a nonlinear system with a high dimensionality and it's very hard to, to manipulate and to, to derive the equations and to manipulate those equations to make the robots do the, the motions that we, we want it to do. So the linear vector dependent model is a, a very good model that was developed by Kajita. Uh, and the, the main thing is that the ZMP, uh, the equation that, that connects the ZMP and the motion of the center of the mass of the robot is a, a linear equation and a second order linear equation, which is a, a a very simple model to, to, to manipulate. And of course, it, it has some approximations and we need to do another things with our robots to make this equation valid. We all know that and we have to, to do some stab stabilization, some other control loops to make the pattern generator work well. But we use those two concepts in, in our algorithms, our motion control algorithms, and they are very useful because we all know that the, the dynamic model is very complex for a human robot. And for motion control, we have a pattern generator of the center of the mass based on linear vector dependent and ZMP. And for the kick, we also use the ZMP and the vector dependent is the same equation that we use for the walking, but we, we also use the cubic splines to make the kicker, the, to make the kicker is kick stronger. And also about our motion control, we do gravity compensation. We, we have learned that this make a, lot of, a, a large difference, as you can see on this figure here on the right. So the left one here, the robot is not using gravity compensation, in the right one is using gravity compensation. Basically, we calculate the moments that act in, at each joint due to gravity and uh, use the um, uh, invert, in, inverse model of the servo motor to compensate for those moments the gravity is acting on the set on the joints. And we also have a stabilization loop of orientation using a PV controller, which is a, a very common controller in, in control theory. And also you use the IMU to estimate the angle of the robot and to measure the angular velocity of the of the torso to use has feedback for this PV controller. So here you have a video of a robot uh, play in the art, the American competition, and you can see that we now have a somewhat stable walking and kicking. So the motions have progressed a lot in the last years. Agora vai. Agora vai. Just going to have a So we also compete on the on the human and robot racing. And I think the video is not working here. It's not working okay. But in the humanoid robot racing, you use the same walking. But it, it, this is a competition in Latin America, in Latin America, and we use the same walking as for the, the humanoid kit size competition. 
But to adjust it for frontal speed, you just tune the parameters to have a, a higher frontal, frontal speed and neglecting the, the sideways speed or rotational speed. And we also use a flat foot with sandpaper for more friction so we can complete this track the fastest that we can. And for localization, use a, a, a standard particle filter, a bootstrap particle filter. And we, we have this, this algorithm working well in, in, in simulation, both in Gazebo and WebOps. But for the view robot, we, we, are, we have a lot of problems with the calibration of the transforms between the, the 2D image and the, the 3D world. And we are working to, to make this calibration better and to make this localization also work in the real world. And uh, on your left, you have Gazebo, on your right, you have RVs. And RVs is another tool that we use to, to understand what the robot is seeing, what it's taking. Okay, so, so now I, I think Gustavo is going to continue the presentation. Next, next slide. Um, first, we have a uh, electronic review of the new, the new robot. The new version brings re uh, relevant improvements com compared to the, pre the previous one. And these changes are, are motivated by simplifying the design and improving in the robot performance to allow operation of a taller and heavier robot. The design updates can be grouped as integration of the electronics, improved like service network, Better enhancement, more powerful main computer, and a neural and a neural network dedicated process. The main change in the integration is integration of the CMB with the PWB into a unique power control and mounting board at PCMB in the center of the figure. Uh, to improve the self update rate, each leg has now its own differential RS for. 485 network ended by the FSB. The leg servos of the new ro robot are the Dynamixo XM540, a more powerful mo motor with uh, about three times more stout torque than the M MX28. And the main computer, computer was also updated to a much more powerful one uh, using a new version of Intel processors. Uh, since the main computer and the servos are much much more stronger now they now they consume much more energy too so the battery needs need to be updated to a more a more stronger one too so we also update this part and next slide next slide and uh, here we have a detailed view of the fsb board the design was made by co by current and some former members of the team the idea of this board is to capture forces applied in the in different point in different points of the foot, and using this data reduces the number of fouls caused by a lot of balance. And next slide. And here, here's just a, a, a print of the software that is being developed to this board. Uh, it's developed using the uh, STM Cube MX. Uh, which is a, a improvement too, because usually we, we, we use the Atolic, which is a not very stable program. So now we, we are trying to migrate to a new software to develop the firmware of the board. And that's it, next slide. I'd like to end this presentation by thanking our, our sponsors, Senec, Itax, ST, Micropress, Victor Pixels, Auto, SolidWorks, Rapid, Polymology, Machinge, Much Lab, Intel, and Wildlife. And that's it. Thank you for your time. And any questions? Thank you very much for the presentation. We have a couple of minutes for questions. And just a quick reminder if you don't want to be on the YouTube recording, then please add your questions in the chat. Otherwise, you're welcome to unmute yourself and ask the question as well. Perhaps just a uh, uh, quick question. So what are your priorities for the next uh, virtual season competition? Uh, 
Uh, yes. So, uh, as I'm, uh, I, I think that you know that we had like some problem with collision. So, by the next one, we'll definitely have solved that. But uh, as a uh, new uh, things, we, we would like to try, like the, the segmentation with neural networks is something that uh, we we have the, the system to do. However, our robots cannot uh, do it in real time. But in the, the simulation, uh, as it's done on the cloud, it is possible. So we like to test it out and other technologies. We also have a, a, a beefier uh, a neural network YOLO v4, I think. So it also takes uh, more processing than we the one they use. So I think uh, we'd like to try to use that on simulation for the next virtual league as well. Cool. We have some questions in the chat. The first one is what material do you use for 3D printing? I think Chad can answer this one. Chad, are you there? Okay, so uh, we use PLA. I don't know how uh, uh, how you, you say that in what the, the acronym means, but we use PLA and ABS. This, these are the two materials and yeah, we have tried both and we prefer ABS now because PLA, it breaks too easily with uh, collisions. So when the robots, we, it falls a lot, we all know that. And we, we, when you use PLA for the 3D printing, it breaks a lot. So we are going to try to make everything now with ABS. And then the last question was, uh, what your motivation was to develop a new force sensing board? And if you had a look at the one from Roban and Bitbots and what are improvements that you made compared to uh, Roban and Bitbots or other, I guess, other force sensing boards that are openly available outside. Yeah, we, we definitely looked into the Roban. We actually kind of uh, based in the in their project. So, we the idea was adapt our project to our reality. So we use basically our uh, our own parameters or own needs to develop the board. So this was what was in mind when we when we built the improvement. Well, I don't think it was exactly the improvements. It was most was much more something like adaptations to our reality than actually and how how can we do better so we are we are actually trying our first version of the board so we're still trying to see how we can improve our own version i have the same thing i have something to add to, to this answer uh, we are uh, here at uh, aeronautics institute of technology which is an institute dedicated to aeronautics and people here, they have a lot of expertise with Eastern gaze. So we had some, some consulting with, with those guys that, that work with Eastern gaze, and they helped us to, to find some Eastern gaze that are very high performance. So the models that we are using for Eastern gaze, I think they are, they are not the same as Coburn. And I think that are with, of a better quality than the ones that other teams use, but they are more expensive too. Maybe this is some kind of improvement. Of, of course, we have to, to make the board, to make the sensor, to, to really verify if this is, this is correct. 